Hello, I'm Javis Lewis and welcome back in our series about DAS Studio, the free 3D content manipulation app from DAS 3D. In our previous video, we were talking about how to manipulate our 3D objects inside the viewport using the direct manipulation tools. And that was a good way to just shift objects where we want them to be visually, but there may also be occasions in which you need a more precise way of putting them where they need to be, a more precise way to rotate them, like exactly 90 degrees, for example, and so forth. And that isn't easily possible with those tools. Well, lucky for us, there is another way of manipulating objects in our viewport, namely with the parameters tab. That's an often overlooked method, uh, not so much for manipulating objects, but for all kinds of things that we can do with anything we want to manipulate in our viewport. So I encourage you to make use of that early on. Let me show you where that is and what I mean by that. So I've got my retro scene back up and running here. And on the top right hand side, I can see my scene tab, which is still open. And just underneath it, there's the parameters tab. That's kind of here on the city limits light theme on the right hand side, but you can move it anywhere you like. And in fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to move it over to the left just because I keep referring to it. And otherwise my own picture is going to interfere with it. And so, you know, I'm going to open that here. And uh, this is now the parameters tab here. Let me make that a bit smaller. There we go. So now we have the scene tab open on the top right and the parameters are on the bottom left here. But you can move that anywhere you like. So I tend to leave it on the right hand side. And look what's happening here. So on one hand, we can select at the very top which object we'd like to manipulate. So right now the sphere is selected. And I can also see that up here in the scene tab. And with this drop down, I can now pick which item I'd like to manipulate. And that's kind of cool. So this is almost like a little mini representation of the scene tab. I can see hierarchies, which we're gonna talk about soon, and groups and all that. So it makes it easy for me to select and hone in on one particular object and then manipulate that. It's a very powerful thing, this parameters tab. So earlier we used this little manipulation gadget to move our objects around. But uh, notice what happens when I head over to the general tab on my selected object. Uh, close this down. There is uh, a couple of things down here that come up. When I open general, then I see the transforms tab. And this is uh, looks a little bit convoluted, but it's more or less exactly what the universal manipulator gadget can do. So we have X, Y, and Z translate, X, Y, and Z rotate. We have scale overall and X, Y, and Z scale. And if these are too many parameters for you, I don't blame you. There's another little disclosure triangle. If we open that, then we can isolate just the translation, just the rotation, or just the scale values. And they work just the same here with sliders as a representation of sliders than the gadget or the, the gizmo in the scene would have worked. So if I go to the translation tab and I wanted to move my object around the blue axis, the Z axis, then I can just move this slider and it'll do exactly the same as what I would have done had I left clicked and hold that little arrow in the scene on the manipulator and it would do the same thing but the value is more precise so i can type in i don't know minus 50 and that'll be exactly there so that's kind of good to line up objects sometimes on a sphere we can't really see rotation very well but if i go over to my cone here and i head over to the rotation tab then i could say i'd like to rotate my cone around the x-axis by exactly 90 degrees so i just type in 90 and then there it is it's lying flat or if i wanted to rotate it the other way then i can go and type in minus 90 and then it'll do that so that's a nice way of lining up objects and to make sure they are exactly in the positions that we want them to be. So uh, one of those things is always the, is it lined up properly at the bottom? And there's another thing that we haven't quite talked about. We're going to talk about that in the next video uh, where we're going to have a look at how to actually set this pivot point or this origin point on our objects. So is this actually 
touching the plane. So if I wanted perhaps to line up that cone with another plane and I don't want there to be a gap in between because during rendering you can always see a little gap and the shadows look weird and funky and you want those things to be absolutely matched up. Then uh, I can just go to the translate tab or the translation tab and make sure that that origin point is lined up with zero on the y-axis. See that if I move that up then I can move this thing up and down and if this is just a little bit above a ground plane then there'll be a gap and during rendering I can see that there's kind of a weird shadow going on as if my figures would be kind of hovering above the ground not good so we can use the Y translate to set that to exactly zero if we have any doubts about that so play around with that the parameters tab we're going to come back to that time and time again when we come to manipulating our object because sometimes it's just easier to hone in on the numeric value and tweak that that was it for today. If you like this video, then of course share it with friends, family and total strangers. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.